Good morning and welcome to whoop, um, me adjusting my chair. Good morning and welcome to the Self Sewn Wardrobe podcast and live broadcast. Uh, this broadcast originally appeared in the Facebook group, The Self Sewn Wardrobe with Mallory Donahue. So uh, if you want to be part of our awesome sewing community, go and join the Facebook group. Uh, you can do so by going to facebook.com slash group slash self sewn wardrobe. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, Carl. Um, sorry, it's just me this morning. Hi, Janet. How you doing? It's good to see you all. Uh, fabulous to have you here with me in the store this morning. Um, and hi to Jean. And Jean, I'm glad you're here since you sort of requested this topic. It's It's been a little bit of a... Of a of a requested topic recently, but we just haven't gotten to it. And good morning to Bethany. And hi, Tracy. Tracy says she's been having a bad week. Tracy, I feel ya. Everything in my house is trying to kill me this morning. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry you're having a bad week. And I hope it gets better. Maybe sewing will be part of that. Maybe eating or drinking something very good will be part of that. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you can... Um, get get some kind of respite from whatever is causing your bad week. And good morning to Molly. All right, so I've got a machine with me here, and it's a serger. The technique that we're talking about this morning is generally used with knits. I'm just scooting this serger all over the place. Um, <laughs> generally, uh, generally used with knits. It doesn't have to be necessarily. It's just another way of seaming things, but. I am gonna talk about it in relation to knits. So good morning to Karen, and hi Glenda and Lonnie. Good to see you. Um, and yeah, let's let's just get right to it. There are quite a few people watching, even though we just started. So um, I have some fabric here, and it's a, a white and blue chevron, and uh, it was from like a flawed batch of fabrics from Girl Charlie, actually. <laughs> so anyway, what I wanna tell you all is that this chevron fabric, oh, good morning, is it Jenna or Gina? You have to tell me, okay, um, uh, from Seattle. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's good to remember during this whole tutorial which way the direction of greatest stretch is for my for my cuff, okay? So we're making cuffs this morning. Uh, and with the chevron, the chevron, you know, is like a horizontal thing and the direction of stretch is in the same direction as that chevron, okay? So that's what we need to remember. Now you might be making a cuff out of all ways stretch knit, you know, knit that stretches both ways and that's fine too. But just so you know, um, that this is the main direction of stretch in my fabric here and I have to keep that in mind as I go forward. So the ham hot method of putting together cuffs is so called because generally when you have a cuff it's shaped something like this piece of fabric that I have in my hand and it's longer than it is tall, okay? So this is the long way across. It's also the way that would like wrap around my wrists or my ankle uh, if it's a cuff on a pair of pants. And so what we wanna do first, we're gonna fold this hamburger style. And if you're unfamiliar with this, this was not used in my, uh, in my elementary school art, <laughs> um, what do I say, curriculum or uh, something like that, but but a lot of people it was. So when you fold something together, you know, along that long edge and you get a fatter piece versus a skinnier piece, this is called hamburger. And this, as, a, as opposed to hot dog, okay? So what we do with our cuffs generally is hamburger, hot dog, ham hot. And you can remember that because even though I do love sausage and hot dogs and whatnot, okay, hamburgers are better than hot dogs and so they come first. Oh, good morning to Lynette and to Mary. So first I'm gonna fold it hamburger style, right sides together. Mary said she made a pair of joggers and the cuff was on the outside. This should fix things for you, okay. Uh, good morning to Eric. Okay, hamburger, and then we have our folded edge right here, and we fold the piece in half, hot dog style. What you have, you have a rectangle, okay? And it's the same ratio, it's, this, it's the same proportion as your other uh, cuff because you fold it in half twice, right? 
Um, and what you have on one edge, you have a folded edge where it's all fold, okay? Good morning to Saritha and to Marina and Amanda. And on the other edge you have where you have two folds, okay? We're looking for the short edge that has all the raw edges. This should be four raw edges, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna go to my serger and I'm just going to serge and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put my foot control on the ground. Sometimes it's you know, sewing sewing in front of the camera is hard. Not just anybody can do it. <laughs> okay. And I'll show this again. Okay. So now sew that with your appropriate seam allowance, serge it, whatever. So I've only sewn once, okay, but I've gone through four layers instead of just two. And now when I turn it right side out, like Lonnie showed in her video, oh yeah, I apologize if I don't have a cute baby in my video like Lonnie did. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I guess I should tell a little backstory for the people who don't, don't know about that. Um, <laughs> but now we have a cuff here, okay? And the special thing about this cuff is the seam that makes up the cuff over on the side that makes it go in the round, it has all the layers enclosed in it. I'll get up close to the camera here soon, like Lonnie was trying to do in her video. So my layers cannot shift, okay? As opposed to if I had done the traditional, oh, that's the wrong thing. Uh, done the traditional sort of, I don't, I don't even know if I like the word traditional because I'm sure people figured this out a while ago. If you had just uh, folded the cuff in half and sewed this long seam, okay, I'll do that. So instead of ham hotting, all I did was fold the cuff in half like I was supposed to. And then you'd fold the cuff on itself, wrong sides together to have this, you know, uh, cuff where you have the right sides out, okay? So when you do that, you have these two layers that can shift and it's not a terrible thing and maybe it's not a huge deal for you. Maybe you can handle it, okay? It's, but uh, the ham hot method is a really nice way to do it and you get that cuff you only have the one set of serging instead of two seams on top of each other. So there's less bulk. And you know, ZD is all about reducing bulk. She is big time. Like, so don't do that, it adds bulk. You know, um, <laughs> I guess a lot of, I don't know. People can, can tend to over sew a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna get up a little closer to the camera and show you these guys. And then I'm gonna talk about longer cuffs too. So let me move my microphone. Oh, and not get caught up not take the serger with me. It doesn't need to come with me. Hi, Donna. Good to see you this morning. Okay, so here's the traditional cuff where it's just, okay, it's just sewn one layer together and then you turn it and so then you have two layers flipped together and they can shift around on you a little bit, okay? With the ham hot method, what you end up with is this cuff where all four of your layers are enclosed. See, look, they're all enclosed in one seam. So when I turn it, Lonnie, no one, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot to take them off this morning. <laughs> so here's the ham hot. Here's the ham hot uh, method, and everything is enclosed for four layers. Okay, all right. And so then I turn it right side out, and ta-da! So there we go. Now I want to um, I want to talk a little bit about Lonnie's video and um, why. Ham hot is really cute thing to say, but not uh, not always correct. Okay, I love saying ham hot. <laughs> and actually, what we were doing, we were filming the cocoon kimono 
uh, uh, class. And Mary said, I totally missed how that was done. Uh, so I'm gonna do it again, don't worry. And we'll make a nicer video about this that we'll put like on YouTube that doesn't have all of me saying like how much I love you all on there. Um, Lonnie was making cuffs for some baby pants that were absolutely darling. And they were really tall cuffs that could get like folded up again after they are like put on the baby, you know. And so they could be short for like a newborn and then get taller for like a six month old. They sort of looked a little bit like harem pants because they had like a drop crotch to them. I loved it. Uh, and they were really cute. And Lonnie makes really cute things for babies along with a few other of you people running baby clothing business you you guys make some cute stuff out there okay so oh hi Sandy bye Sandy as she said she had to sneak in and then she had to leave but what I want to say is when you have a really long cuff okay when you have a very long cuff on your on your pants or on your uh, shirt the hamburger hot dog rule won't apply okay so if you really want to know which way to fold your stuff you can have it right sides up and think about how it's going to go around your body your limb your waist your, you know so if it's your hand or your ankle or whatever and fold it that way first fold it in the direction where it's going to go around your body okay and then and that's how you would have sewn it that's how you would have sewn that cuff right okay so you would have just sewn it with one one seam, all right? What we do is we fold it so that that seam, those raw edges that we would have sewn so that there are four layers instead of just two. And then you can sew that up. And now when I sew this up, I'm going to get a very, uh, a, a long cuff like Lonnie was getting her video. So if y'all missed it, Lonnie did a video because a lot of people have been requesting it. about the ham hot method okay um and then Lonnie did one with her baby and it was darling okay so now uh, and actually I think Lonnie you know, the proportion of your cuffs were they were even like longer than this they were more extreme and I, I wish I would have made a more extreme cuff this morning after I <laughs> I got in here like 15 minutes before I was supposed to go live and I'm eating like a fast food breakfast and blah 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 okay <laughs> so <laughs> I'm here. It's all good. Uh, so I'm stretching the right way. I'm I've ham hotted. Or I haven't I haven't ham hotted in this case. I folded in the direction that it's going to go around my body, and then I folded it in half again. Okay. So that's what you do to make a cuff. Uh, you can do this for waistbands, but Lonnie also pointed out. Lonnie's my buddy on this one. That uh, she accidentally ham hotted a waistband that was supposed to have. A, it was supposed to be an elastic casing. So. Whoops! Um, you won't be you you won't be able to thread something through because all four layers are enclosed here. Okay, there 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 there's no pass through the seam. Okay, and that can be nice. Lauren says she's making a cardigan that has cuffs. That can be absolutely fabulous to do because. Uh, you're, you're not gonna get the shifting that you can get and you won't have two seams to deal with, you just have one seam to deal with. So just keep that in mind as you are ham hotting and whatnot. Oh, and hello to Stacy if she's still watching. I saw her join in, but I was saying something very important. Um, <laughs> so you can, um, you can do this for waistbands, especially maybe some taller waistbands if, if, if it works, you know, if, if it makes sense uh, for, for the pattern, okay? Um, Stacy says, I have no idea what you're talking about, but now I want a hot dog. Stacy, 50 Cent Corn Dog Day at Sonic. Is it today? I think it might be today. You better bring me a corn dog, Stacy. Stacy lives in town, okay? Um, she was our photographer. If any of you got to see the live video where we we're getting our headshots taken. Stacy is our photographer, and I think that February 16th is the is 50 Cent Corn Dog Day at Sonic, and this has just worked out magically. Is all I want to say about that. Okay, um, <laughs> so that's ham hot for cuffs. When we were originally, um, well, what I, originally is not the, a good word, but where I showed this off to Becca and Sam recently. Okay. Uh, it was with the cocoon kimono and we 
almost had that ready to be like a free online class for all of you. And we put cuffs on in the, in the cocoon kimono. And so the cuffs, um, the cuffs, I was trying to show Sam and Becca and I did it the wrong way. Okay. Um, I did, I did the cuffs like, you know, hot dog hamburger or something like that. And I couldn't remember how to do it. And I, uh, you know, Becca and Sam were a little skeptical because I made this thing that did not turn into a cuff. And they were like, oh, Mallory, why don't you just do it like the way most patterns do it? And da 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 da, you know. Um, <laughs> it was like, no, 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 this is really cool. This is really cool because the, um, the way I learned to do this cuff was from my mom. <clears throat> she bought this store about 10 years ago when I was, um, fifth, well, I guess I, I, I started working in the store maybe a little before she bought it. Sorry, I got some of my eye video people. And, uh, you know, there are little demos that you can do on machines to show people what they can do. And somebody would come and say, why the heck do I want a serger? You know, I'm a, I don't know. I've, I'm done without one. And this was a demo that we could do. We'd normally do something very small, a little baby cuff. Um, and do it out of some knit and there were just rectangles uh you know stacked up rectangles of knit stacked up in a little demo box and we would show people how to do that on the serger you know this way and i had never made the rule for myself or um quite internalized it as much as when i had to do it on my own you know uh, after she taught me that but it's a pretty classic serger demo for for to show this cuff and so a lot of you are saying, I've never heard of it this way, or this is the first time. So I'm glad to share something with you, but I don't want to say that, you know, I'm the first one ever to do it like this. I do, though, I really like to explore combining seams in garments. It's not always advisable, okay? Um, you're not always supposed to do it. <laughs> but I do sort of like to uh, see if I can simplify things, kind of like this ham hot method does. Okay, well, this, oh, okay. Eric says, how do you feel about sewing the cuffs to the sleeves before closing the sleeve and the cuff side seams, such as children's mittens where the circle is tight? Um, it's, if you, if you feel like you need to do that, I don't think it's like a bad thing. I try to avoid it, but sewing in tight circles is another awesome video that we need to make. And Mary says, are you sewing down just one side? Yes, ma'am. So, um, and like I said, I think, I think we could maybe make a nicer video of this. I think mom's actually going to be in the shop later this morning and we could make a nice little video, uh, where we get zoomed in we take some B roll and it's maybe even clearer Mary. Cause I know I've just got one camera angle right now. Um, Mary says she's trying it with a tissue. It's a little confusing unless you can actually like sew it up. Um, so Eric, uh, sewing in really tight areas is hard. Um, and on children's clothing, I see it. I see it in ready to wear children's clothing. And you've got a serger seam like coming off the edge of the sleeve, you know, and they tuck it back through and it's normally not a problem, you know. Uh, so I would never tell someone you can't do that. Obviously you can, this is a little, you know, this is a nicer look, okay, um, than that. But sewing in tight spaces. And then Jean asked about curly knits. We need to do several videos on our how we use our hands when we sew, like how mom and I use our hands when we sew, because we are fabric tamers. And I was just watching a video of some other, it was another sewing blogger, or a, a, maybe a pattern company, uh, stitching up a sample. And the way she was sewing, I don't want to say it was wrong, because I think she got a fine result from it. but. Uh, she was doing some stuff that I think can make people unsuccessful when they're a little less practiced. And so how we hold our fabric, it seems a little second nature to us now. And I just tell them, hey, sew that together and they have trouble with it or, you know, and so I, I, I have to show people, I have to demo before I tell them to just let them loose, you know, on, on stuff like that. So, um, I, I think that those are definitely some videos we need to do about how we, how we hold fabric when we sew, how we guide fabric through the sewing machine, <clears throat> whether we're doing knits or wovens, whether we're just easing or sewing a very, you know, a straight seam that's one-to-one -one, or whether we're, you know, putting elastic in something and it needs to be stretched. So those, those are all videos uh, that are on the list uh, to, to make for sure. 
because I think that they can help people. <laughs> Jean says sub a suboptimal. That's a good way to say it. You know, I never I I hate to criticize someone who I I don't know or you know who's not asking for it. I'm not I'm not uh, meaning to do that, but I. I did watch it and I thought, oh, that's something I tell my people not to do, you know. So anyway, all right, well, I'm going to get off of here. I got to go um, uh, run the store. I've got a few things to do, a few things to uh, finish up for the So Here box, which is exciting. A few of you have been ordering in the last few days. So our, our available So Here boxes, I think we're down to about 20-ish or something like that. The Sew Here box is our quarterly sewing box curated by us, and we put fun sewing items in it. And this time, the box is full of some artistic endeavors by myself and Becca and Sam and Mom. And we are, uh, we, we put a lot of time and effort into getting these things together, and um, so there are some really neat things that are getting printed out for you. And I get, I get, I'm not supposed to say anything else. Okay, um, <laughs> so you all have a lovely day. I hope that you are uh, getting to sew something today. And I hope that I get to sew something today as well because I'm kind of running out of some clothes right now. I've, I've realized my rotation of easy tees is getting like a little stale on the live broadcast. So hopefully I can um, pop one out today and get some of your orders sent out today. Uh, several of you have used the code BDAY, B-D-A-Y, for our Maxi Lux Stretch Thread, and that code expires tomorrow. So if you want Maxi Lux Stretch Thread, you can go to our website, sewhere.com, click on shop, and check out that stretch thread. Uh, if you're listening by a podcast and this hasn't gotten out in time, the code did end on Friday, um, February 17th. So anyway, all right, goodbye to my very... Uh, fabulous, perceptive audience. Uh, you all have a lovely day. And once again, I hope you get something sewn today.